What's up guys, my name is Julie and this is The Curated Curvy where I bring you along for the journey as I attempt to create the curated wardrobe of my dreams with these two hands and today I have for you all a 2022 year in review. 2022 was quite eventful for me in terms of sewing. I began my YouTube channel I want to say in August of 2022 although I was sewing well before that so we got a lot of sewing done. In total I made 75 items about ish. I did a massive closet um clean out a few weeks ago got rid of a ton of stuff so whatever was in that bag was in that bag and is no longer a part of my memory but for the things that lasted I have them all here to show you without further ado let's get into these clothes so I'm not going to go in chronological order of what or when it was sewed. So I'm not going to start with January, February, March, April, because honestly, some months I don't know what I sewed. I just know that these are all the things that I made this year. So I've kind of organized them on the rack in a way that makes sense for me to go through. Um, so that's how we're going to go through them. All right. So first I have the shorts pattern. This for me is literally the perfect shorts pattern. This pattern is Vogue 1781. <coughs> Oops, and I have made it three different times. So I have it in a crinkle rayon, I have it in a cotton gauze, and I have it in a linen. The linen is by far my favorite version. This was also the last version of this shorts pattern that I made. So by the time I got to this version, I had tweaked the pattern quite a bit to get it to fit me the way that I wanted it to fit me. So yeah, this is the linen version. And then like I said, I have two more versions. Actually, Actually, I have four of these. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I have four of these pants. So this one I didn't pre-wash, and this one I didn't pre-wash, and they're both from the same fabric store, but these shrunk a lot, and so they're they're pretty short. They're kind of like hoochie shorts, but I still wore them a ton. This was basically my summer uniform. I wore these pants and then the matching tops that I made to go with them, and so I will show you those next. All right, so as I mentioned, those shorts were basically my summer uniform, and I wore them each with these little tie front tops. This was a self-drafted pattern. I was inspired by the Cool Stitches Elliott top, but that top does not come in my size, and I don't like having to like size up patterns, and so I tried my hand on drafting one. It came out nothing like that pattern, but it was a happy accident because I absolutely love it. They just have like a really loose sleeve. They are just joined by literally one tie in the middle. They're cropped, they're flowy, they're they're light. I made three of these tops, two of them in the silky prints I just showed you, and then this last one I did in a cotton bed sheet. It was an Egyptian 100% cotton bed sheet, so it kind of functions like a cotton poplin. And on this one, I sheared the sleeve cuffs has the tie front top. This is by far my favorite and the most versatile, obviously because it's a crisp white and it can go with just about anything. But like I said, I have literally worn these to pieces. So the next thing in the shorts and summer section is the Seguro set by Friday Pattern Company. This was a cut of vintage linens that I found in a thrift store. It actually seemed like it was a sample where they had two colorways of the same print just kind of sewn together and then there was a tag on it, which is how I know that for sure. It was vintage. It was a wax cotton, but since washing the wax has worn off. But yeah, I used this to make the Seguro set from Friday Pattern Company. I did hack it and do the shorts version instead of doing the long pants, just because I didn't have enough for the long pants and it worked out perfectly because again, this was like an everyday summer set, like definitely a go-to. So again, for the Vogue 1781, the orange linen shorts, I didn't make one of those tie front tops. Instead, I made two different tops here. So the first one, is this vest I want to say this is McCall's 6228 let me double check um yeah so the, so this vest is McCall's 6228 it's an older pattern but I think it's still in print like it's still in the drawers at my Joann's I don't know if it's in the pattern book or not but basically I hacked it I cropped it just to make it a short like waist length vest that I could put over so this was one summer set for me um absolutely love this vest super easy to sew because i cropped it i squeezed this out of remnants so i think i had like a yard and a half left after i made these shorts and with that one yard and a half i made this vest and this top 
And this top is the top half of the uni dress by Vicky Sew's pattern. The sleeves are not the top from the um are not the sleeves from the uni dress because there was no way that I was gonna get those gigantic sleeves out of whatever I had left, the remnant pieces I had. So these sleeves are from the Milk Made, or I think it's now entitled the Dream Frock by Lydia Naomi Patterns. So the bodice is the uni dress, the sleeves are from the dream frog but yeah this was the uni top i wore like those three pieces like mixed all summer all right now keeping in with the vicky sews uni dress i have two more versions of that dress here both of these are sleeveless the sleeves on that dress are gigantic this is just a all white linen um that i picked up from joanne's uni dress with no sleeves the back again has this um bow detail and the strap across it has a kind of like dipped back and you can see and it's elasticated I don't wear this dress as much with this dress I also did fully line the bodice because as you saw with the top that I made I don't like that facing and how short it is I also don't like doing facings on white fabric because you tend to be able to like see the facing and I just don't like the way that looks this Vicky sews is a uni dress hack as you probably have noticed by this point I love a good hack so I took the top half of the uni dress and then I attached it to the bottom half of the Vicky Sews Surrey dress just for this like really really cute dress. I love this dress. I love how it came out. It just doesn't photograph well for whatever reason so it's not present on any of my social medias. So this is the uni top and the Surrey. Now I'm going to show you the Vicky Sews Surrey dress. Right, so this is the Vicky Sews Surrey dress. I actually did get a lot of wear out of this dress in the summer months. Basically it's um it's like a long skirt portion and then it has this bib that comes up and it ties around your neck and then you wear like your shirt over it and it's really cute. I did this in a thrifted fabric that I had picked up at some point or another. It was a really easy sew. You do have the option to line this dress if you want to but I didn't find it necessary to line it. It has a zipper in the back, belt loops in the back to like weave the strap through and yeah it was a pretty simple really satisfying make. All right we are still on the Vicky Sew patterns so this is the Vicky Sews Chiara top this is basically like a corseted like bustier crop top really really pretty I use this gorgeous floral fabric that I found on clearance at Joann's it has the bra cups it has the underwire it has the boning this um this pattern comes with long sleeves that have the shearing on the bottom I just shortened the sleeves and I did the shearing around like the top end it is fully lined has a zipper in the back I love this top the only thing that deters me from wearing it so much is that the bust portion is way too big for me this is a pattern that I fully intend to revisit and tweak and really get to fit me because it's just it's my style right, next we have the stay stitch Sophia sweetheart neckline dress as a top this neckline is gorgeous I was on Instagram and I saw the needle and the belt and she did this kind of like version of it where it was just like cropped with like the little dip here and I was obsessed and immediately went and bought the pattern and I made it. It is absolutely beautiful. The bodice of it, I believe is, yeah, the bodice is lined. The back is lined. It has like three quarter sleeves. And then I just did a lettuce hem on the bottom to finish it off. The okay. next two things I'll show you that I made are these three button down blouses. They are all the same pattern, although the sleeve, sli the sleeve is slightly varied. So there's this one. There is this one and there is this one. These um, were inspired by the Anna Allen Anthea blouse. I remember, I don't know if it was when the pattern came out or when it just came on my radar, but when it came on my radar, I really 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 wanted it but I remember it was at the end of a month and at that particular time in the month I had blown through my sewing budget for the month so I tried my hand at using my bodice block to self draft it they don't give Anna Allen and Thea blouse but they do give buttoned up giant puffy sleeve vibes um and I really do like them continuing along the lines of self drafted tops I have these two self drafted racer on back tanks that I made I basically bought a racer back tank top from Target that I really really liked the 
the cut of and so I tried my hand at tracing off that pattern and coming up with these two. These also both have shelf bras in them which I love because I do not have to. <laughs> wear a bra. I can see many, many more of these in my future. This one was made to go as a part of another, you guessed it, set, because your girl loves a good set. So let me show you the pants that go with this. Okay, so the pants that I made to go with that, those are Vogue 1419. This was my airport be cute but chic while traveling set, and it came out really well. Absolutely love these pants, love how they came out. I am thinking currently on my second pair and what that's going to look like and yeah nope. the next pair of pants that I have are simplicity 8605 these are another wide leg pair of pants that's just kind of my jam as you can see but this pattern it has like a little bit of a paper bag waist I took it down some just to not have it be super dramatic uh, another two inch piece of elastic one stitch so through it to give it the shearing it does have inseam pockets I don't think also this pattern again I am gonna keep these around I think they'd be really nice just to kind of like lounge around and wear in the house okay so to go with these pants to get the set I made simplicity 9270 it is this button-down blouse here I really 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 like this pattern it's a really really nice pattern it comes together really easily and it is definitely one that I am going to keep playing around with next continuing along the vein of pants I have the Clyde work pant by Elizabeth Suzanne I made two of these this one is in a denim I picked up from Joann's this one is a thrifted cotton twill this one was the first one that I made and is by far my favorite I have worn these a ton they have a tapered leg down at the bottom they are cropped they have these giant side pockets here that go pretty down deep and they are sewn into the side seam they have an elasticated waistband they're really easy so this I want to say if I'm not mistaken was my first pair of pants that I had ever made and I was I was a believer absolutely absolutely love these and pants at out. some point in 2021 Elizabeth Suzanne did put back her Clyde work pant jumpsuit um, onto her site as a purchasable pattern and I made it up in this linen I don't like this I don't like this at all I sewed my size for the pattern and I feel like this is just way it's like miles too big on me it just doesn't fit right, right. next I have my two skirts these are both McCall's 8066 I absolutely love them. It's one skirt pattern, but I feel like the pattern is incredibly versatile. It is an elasticated waistband, but it has a smooth front, which I feel like just elevates it a little more. That is something that I want to get into more this year is sewing pants that don't have a fully elasticated waistband. So you see the front of the waistband is smooth, and then the back of the waistband is elasticated, which I really like and obviously makes really easy for fitting. One pattern, but I feel like that one pattern is incredibly versatile, and I got two very different skirts that I have. I've worn a good bit since I made them. Next skirt that I have is McCall's 7981. I absolutely love this skirt. It is long, it is denim. Um, yeah, it's a midi length, but it's really, really full at the bottom. It has a fitted waistband, button placket down the front. It seam pocket. And I did size up just to be sure that it felt fit nicely over my hips since the top portion of the skirt is a little bit more fitted than the bottom. I really do like this skirt. This is another one that I have gotten pretty good wear out of. So it's this one is McCall's 7983. It is also the shirt that I'm wearing right now and I made one more version in a pink knit that I have since donated. This is in a ribbed knit that I picked up from Joann's. It is so pretty and yeah I really really like both of these. I actually have a few knits that I picked up recently that I am planning on using to make at least three more of these um, because I like using them for layering and then I like wearing them with my skirts. All right, next I have Simplicity 9647. If you follow the channel, then you have definitely seen this. Um, I made this from a thrifted cotton flannel bed sheet absolutely gorgeous the print on this is just stunning it's so beautiful I don't wear a lot of blouses like this and so I have been having a hard time styling it also because I don't have a lot of bottoms which we'll talk about in the end of the video but I have been having a hard time styling it however I am not getting rid of this even if it is just eye candy it will be eye candy because I think this top is absolutely beautiful I think we are officially at the halfway mark. Right, so this is vintage McCall's 6618 this top I absolutely adore my only regret is the 
time of year that I sewed it um, because it is open front and then it's closed with a series of ties. So it's completely open. There's no button closure. It's a pretty deep um, neckline. And so the reality is that I'm just not gonna get as much wear out of it in the next few months as I would like to because I am very, very excited about this top. But this is um, this is one that I definitely, definitely love. It's kind of giving pirate blouse vibes. Yeah, and I really like that. Next, I have the Dream Frock, which used to be titled the Milkmaid Dress by Lydia Naomi Studio. This is just a shirt version of the Dream Frock. That dress in particular, I think I made like four or five times in 2021. So coming up on 2022, we were coming into the winter, or we were in winter, it was January of 2022, and I wanted a dress version to match my Clyde pants because again, your girl loves a good set. <laughs> so I made um, the top and this top I actually did line and bone. I elongated the sleeves, which is a hack, and then I put another just continuous cuff on them. I have no complaints about this. I absolutely love this pattern. I think it is just so beautiful and so me. And for me, this is like more of a timeless piece. So that's that. Next I have McCall's 8144, which is just a crop sweater. Pretty simple. This was made with a chenille fabric that I picked up um, from Joann's I think in 2021 on clearance really like this I don't know how I feel about the pattern as a whole um the neckline is kind of interesting and I went to cut it out again to make another like little crop sweater and the thing that put me off about it was the length which is something that like hindsight is 2020 because I usually wear everything cropped but I think this is just a smidge too cropped because while I do like something cropped I don't want to do this and then like I'd be completely exposed you know right, next I have a vintage simplicity pattern this is vintage simplicity 8620 it is obviously now out of print i made two versions of this so this is a top version and then this is a little jacket without a closure version last year in 2021 like these sleeves were like all of the rays there was like a friday pattern company blouse there was a mccall's blouse there was the bakerloo blouse like everybody was doing these patterns and i had already had this pattern in my stash and so instead of like going out and buying a new pattern i just chose to use what i have and next i have this cardigan which is vogue 1914 i actually have a another one of these cardigans that i have made literally like the last few weeks of december and i cannot find it <laughs> I don't know where it's at so I'm just showing you this one but this is Vogue 1914 I did it in the chenille fabric that I picked up from Hobby Lobby this fabric is magnificent I really really like the construction of this I have sewn a lot of cardigans and I feel like by far this is the best constructed cardigan or the best pattern for a cardigan that I have sewn so far and so I do plan on making more of these. Next is my cord dress and top. These are self-drafted. So this was the mock-up version. I just used my bodice block. Um, I drafted a collar. I did a giant puffy sleeve with my usual cuff on the bottom. I don't know if you can tell, but I was able to gather the ruffle portion on the bottom. However, when it came to doing the actual dress, these are the same. This is the same fabric as a quarter I picked up from Joann's in two different colorways. However, again, with the dress portion, I don't know if it's because it's long or whatever, but trying to gather up the skirt was just not working. So I ended up doing fork pleats. It has pockets. I lined it with some fabric that I picked up on clearance from Hobby Lobby absolutely adore this this was my valentine's day dress last year all right next this was a thrifted cotton bed sheet this is a doan inspired pattern hack that i tried to do this was another self-drafted pattern so it has a scoop neckline that is um it's basically like a drawstring the entire neckline like you see it's a oh, falling off the hanger the entire neckline is a drawstring it has small puffy sleeves with a very tiny band on the bottom cute little cuff detailing um the front is split front so it's two pieces and they just kind of cross over here on the bottom for a little bit of closure the skirt is gathered and then it has a nice little hem on the bottom like i said this was inspired by a dolan dress i have so many regrets because i'm pretty sure that i tossed this pattern after i drafted it because i wasn't happy with it and it turned out to be one of my most worn makes of the summer so that is really a bummer because i don't think i have this pattern and i have no idea how i put this together but yeah all right next I have my Kaja pinafores by Schultz pattern so I will show you the actual um the traditional and then my hack so this is the first Kaja pinafore this is by Schultz I believe that is how you pronounce it patterns it is a pinafore dress it is a lined it has inseam pockets bust starts it is fully lined and it has a beautiful hem facing detail on the bottom 
comes together very easily uses the burrito method I think this was my first time using the burrito method and I was moved darling we we were attached we were committed I was in awe of just how beautifully you can finish like your seams using the burrito method next is my Kaja pinafore hack because we love a good hack around these parts and so this is my Kaja pinafore summer dress because I absolutely did love the dress I don't wear this dress as a pinafore I wear this dress as a standalone dress let's get into the details so basically um what I did was I did scoop um instead of having the V in the front I turned it into a rounded neckline and then in the bottom I, or in the back, excuse me, I scooped it out a lot to have a low back and then I finished all of the edges instead of lining it. I finished them all with like really fun bias binding. At the time, Joanne's had a lot of this bias binding on sale. So this is a really thin pink bias binding and then this is a blue bias binding. And then I also finished the hem of the dress off with the bias binding as well. I added patch pockets that have a little tiny pleat in them to the front of the dress instead of the inseam pockets and then one little piece of bias binding around the back just as a little band to keep the dress from falling off of my shoulders. Next I have my Vogue 9278. I have two versions of this dress and I actually made three of these dresses this year. One of them has since been donated. So this is the mini version. This is technically a hack because the dress doesn't come as a mini version. I did talk about this in one of my Friday Sews videos which I will link up there I think I think it's up there for you and then this is the regular full length version this is in a linen fabric and then the black one is in a thrifted mystery fabric that I picked up from the thrift store in a bundle of fabrics next I have the bubble frock by Lydia Naomi studio and again this is another one that I made three of one of them is just hanging in the closet it was kind of like an extra special occasion dress that being said love this dress this is another one of my favorites this dress comes with a scallop tent or scallop detailing around the neckline for both of these I omitted that I did pattern test this for her and so the first version I made as is per the pattern instructions after that I liked it better without the scallop tin I feel like without the scallop tin it's very Cicely Banson or Bonson however you pronounce that but she does like these like empire fitted top like flared out dresses and I feel like it definitely gives that aesthetic so this one does have the zipper in the back um the bodice is lined it's pretty straightforward I did omit the zipper in this one because I I realized that I could just slip the dress on, on over my head and if I can do that then I'm not going through the trouble of putting a zipper in it because lazy seamstress here. <laughs> Next we have Vogue 9100. This dress is stunning. Oh my gosh. Love 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 this dress. I made this dress um for my summer trip to Miami, Florida. It is from, they said, I think it is linen. I picked it up at a fabric store in Dallas, Texas again. It is fully lined with a bed sheet. The skirt has a lining underneath it that gives it like more volume. Has like this beautifully gathered skirt on the back. Has a zipper. The back, as you can see, is pretty low cut. The front is pretty low cut. The bodice is very fitted. And yeah, it's like a fit and flare dress. Very simple, but just absolutely gorgeous all right next i have two pleated lily dresses by daria pattern i don't know if it's pattern making i think it is pattern making um i'll put it up on the screen but i have two pleated it's like called the pleated bow lily dress um made two of them this one fits perfectly this one does not this one required a lot of fitting like finagling didn't feel like doing the same amount in this one but this fabric is absolutely gorgeous this is one that i have kept because i do want to go back and adjust it i'm just going to have to completely deconstruct the bodice of it in order to do that and this one i um i took my time with and i did a lot of fitting as i went along if you get the fit right the dress is magnificent all right next i have for you vogue 97.5 this is another you guessed it pattern hack so vogue 97.5 is a jumpsuit with long pants or a dress i have made it into a jumpsuit with shorts which just basically means i cut off half of the pants and then i changed out the sleeve for the dream frock sleeve again because i really do like this sleeve and i felt like it would just be so cute in denim absolutely absolutely love this has pockets i haven't worn it a ton but I have worn it a few times and with this I think again it's the timing. It's an interesting piece and in that the denim is so heavy that you can't get away with it in true summer but then by the time it's true fall you don't really want to wear shorts so kind of got to get it like in that good in between period. Next is the January dress by Lydia Naomi Studios. Um, this is a sweater dress 
maybe it's called the January frock now or something else. I don't know. I do think she renamed it the mitten frock. She renamed it to the mitten frock, but originally it was the January dress um, when I purchased it. That was the name of it. It is supposed to be like cut off here, but I just lengthened it to do like a full floor length dress because again, we love a good hack around here. Cut off the neckline. The original dress pattern has like a funnel neck like that you fold over really high. Um, um, it's supposed to be really warm and really cozy but just like not my aesthetic so I cut off the neckline did some interesting um hem detailing to give it a lettuce hem not much to this dress I like this dress I don't wear it as much as I thought I would and I know exactly why it is because it needs a little bit more width with I don't like when things hug my midsection it's just not like a look that I'm going for right now at this stage in my life. And so because of that, I know that I don't reach for this as much. All right, next we have a few more patterns by Lydia Naomi. And this one is the Celeste Frock. This is her latest pattern. And I did have the pleasure of being able to pattern test this for her. So it is this really cool like dress pattern. It has this very interesting like seaming details on it. This is the back of it. It's just a really, really fun pattern. Really fun, really chic, really now. So I did have the pleasure of pattern testing this. I have no issues with this pattern. I absolutely love it. I actually have another version that I made where I lengthened it by about three inches and that is in the wash right now, but I'll put it up on the screen to show a picture of it for you. So this was another Celeste um, frock that I had made. And when I made it, I knew like from try like trying it on immediately, I just wasn't gonna wear it. I didn't like it. So I had a like a split second decision where I chose to cut it in half and make it into two. And it is a super, super cute little set. We are almost there. This right. is McCall's 8253. This was their 2022, gosh, it's 2023 as well. This was their 2022 summer release. It is definitely a hoochie dress. If you don't know what hoochie means. It's, I don't know how to explain what a hoochie is, but a hoochie would wear something like this. Let me stop, okay. <laughs> It's definitely a hoochie dress, a very risque, absolutely love it. I saw um, Brittany J. Jones made up a version of this and I was smitten. And she kind of had it to where it wasn't like so revealing and so I definitely um, wanted to give it a go. Made it up, this was a bundle that I picked up, a lot of threads on it, this was a bundle that I picked up from Walmart and this was meant to be the mock-up. But I ended up liking the mock-up way better than the final version and have since donated the final version so that was another one that didn't make the rack. Okay, this is Vogue 9311. I also also, so this is January of last year. In January of last year, I had this thought where I was going to do like this capsule basics wardrobe so that it would free up my creative time to experiment with different patterns and that didn't work out at all because the majority of the things I sewed, I didn't wear or didn't keep. Yeah, so that happened. But this was one of those and this was meant to be a pinafore and I don't like it. Honestly, when I was putting everything on the rack, I don't know how this made it um, past my like pattern or past my closet purge because I don't think I've worn this out one time this year. And so after this video, this is definitely going to be donated. Next I have for you McCall's 8320. This was my pen tux galore. Also have a video for this that I will link somewhere up there where the videos go. Love this dress, super cute. I love the vintage details. Has a lot of pin tucks in the bib here. Has some larger pin tucks on the sleeve per the pattern instructions. And then not included in the pattern instructions, but I added myself with some pin tucks down here on the bottom. And I do go over how I achieve all of that in the video of me putting together this dress. I haven't worn it much, but I think that has more to do with the time of year that I made it as opposed to the dress in and of itself. So I'm gonna leave it in the closet, let it go a few months, and then I'll see how I feel about it after the next spring summer situation. But these are self drafted dresses and this was an age inspired dress that I saw and I absolutely liked and it looks simple enough to recreate. So this is the final iteration of the dress. This is from a thrifted bed sheet that I picked up while I was in Miami, Florida. Has a ruffle neckline, giant puffy sleeves. These are actually the sleeves that go with the Vicky Sews Uni dress that I never put on the Vicky Sews Uni dress, but I did put on this dress because in the inspiration picture, her sleeves are massive and these sleeves are absolutely massive. This was the mock-up version of the dress. This is in a self tie-dye fabric that I made. It came out really short, but that was okay. I really just wanted to test out the ruffle and the bodice and what I found that the ruffle wasn't full enough and so as you can see with this one I made the ruffle much much fuller so you get a lot more of those really cool folks. Next I have what is this? McCall's 8036. This was another dress inspired by the website Doen. I really really do like their aesthetic. Added the ruffle, added the lace. It is a wrap front dress with a ruffle
beautiful on the bottom and some more lace this pattern was hacked um just to get me closer to the inspiration picture i believe that the original dress does have a ruffle on the bottom but not a ruffle on the top um i did have to slash and spread this skirt in order to get it to fit me nicely so that is something to be noted because straight out of the packet the skirt would be a little too small on me this is in a cotton polyester blend that I got from Minerva as a part of their brand ambassador program um so I got this in exchange for a blog post on their website and I don't wear this one as much as I thought I would but I'm not ready to get rid of it just yet so I don't know we'll see how it does in the next like warmer seasons all right next I have two Vicky Sews um two dresses this is the Sharon dress by Vicky Sews patterns this fabric is to date the most expensive fabric that I have ever purchased. This is the least worn dress aside from that um, Vogue dress, the Vogue 9311. I don't wear this a lot at all. With Vicky Sews, her bodices for me personally don't fit as tight to my body as I would like them to fit. And I didn't have that revelation at the time of making this dress. What I'm thinking of doing with this dress, honestly, is cutting it up for pieces. So separating the top from the bottom and then putting a waistband on the bottom and wearing it as a skirt. And then probably just hemming the top and wearing it as a crop top because I think I would get a lot more wear out of it if I were to do that but I mean they're really pretty dresses really fun really cute just just don't wear them this was my second most expensive fabric purchase I think this fabric was like $16 a yard this one and that pink one that I showed you was from mood fabrics in Miami when I went to visit Miami I realized that they have a mood fabrics location there and so of course I went and I think the fabrics are absolutely beautiful I was smitten with them but I don't wear these dresses and it has more to do with the pattern than the fabric but still your girl is disappointed this is mccall's 82.94 i don't know if it was like their fall or their summer release i think it was fall and it's just a long button down pattern really pretty i did change a little bit about it i think i skipped the cuff on the sleeve and just added a small band no problem there my issue with this dress is the silhouette this is a drop waist dress and i don't know if that was super evident to me when i was looking at the pattern envelope but personally because my hips and my bum are fuller I don't really do drop waist I like things to sit at like my high waist and it's really pretty I mean it's absolutely beautiful but I have worn this dress zero times next I have Vogue 1783 I do talk about this pattern at length in one of my pattern review videos which I will if I can link for you pretty straightforward it's a button down dress I actually do like this dress and this dress um it has pleats on the bottom and the pleats do come out more towards like the bottom but it's not like a drop waist dress and it also has a belt to cinch in the waist and so I really like this pattern when I made it I kind of waxed on and on about the when I made the video review excuse me I kind of waxed on and on about the things that I didn't like about the pattern but in retrospect I have worn this quite a bit and I do enjoy wearing it and I can definitely see me making another one of these in my future next I have my self-drafted square neckline dresses this is in a linen this is in a thrifted cotton bed sheet this I do have a full video on and this I have a like Friday sews or what I sewed this month review on I wear this dress a ton so much so that I am actually looking in my sash for like a warmer fabric to sew it up in because I love it absolutely love it these were self-drafted so the bodice was self-drafted from my on block the sleeves I think I took off of this simplicity pattern which I want to say was 94.67 and then the skirt is just a giant rectangle and both of them have like really nice really deep hems there's not much to say about these other than that I do have videos on both of them and this one like I said in particular I wear a ton this was a thrift flip but it is the same square neckline bodice from the other two dresses and just a different sleeve I do have a video of this the um of the making of this dress I am really proud of this thrift flip I think this is like my best thrift flip to date originally it was like a 1980s dress that had like a lace collar and shoulder pads and back ties and I changed it out a lot I eliminated the back zip I can also pull this over my head I made this really pretty square neckline to go with it um and then I just reattach the skirt as is so I absolutely love this and I have worn this quite a bit and lastly lastly is another age inspired dress um I don't know if I'll be able to find the original dress for this one but yeah the original dress for this one did have a collar and I couldn't figure out how to put a collar on it at the time I think now if I did it again I would be able to but there are so many delicious details in this dress this dress was a thrifted duvet cover 
that I picked up. The original cover was from Ikea. The sleeves are put on with like these ruffles here. They have a tie on the bottom and the tie is an actual tie. It's not for decoration to tighten them up and give more of a puff. It has giant tears in it. Um, I use the entire duvet cover for this. So it has two tiers and each tier is sewn onto the dress so that you get the ruffle of the tier onto it. These tiers took forever to figure out. The bodice um, is two pieces. So there's a ruffle here and then there's like kind of like the yoke piece before I knew what a yoke actually was. Has a button pocket. And this was completely self-drafted. Like every piece of this dress was self-drafted. I did not use a pattern for the sleeves, for the bodice, for anything. I am so proud of this. I think this is um, like my most proud make of the year because I mean, it just came out absolutely beautifully and I did it all by myself. It, and that is everything that I made in the year 22. As I mentioned before, on this route, or this not everything, that's most of the things I made in the year 22. There are about 71 items on this rack. There are a few things that have been donated, a few things that I just can't find, and a few things that I really don't care to show you because I didn't like that much in the end. Um, yeah, was a busy year in sewing. I'm not gonna get into my sewing resolutions and all that fun stuff in this video because I do have that planned for another video, but if you have stayed this far into the video, you are the real OG. Thank you so much. And until next time, stay beautiful and make great things. Bye.